Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to the Dynasty Wonderland podcast. With me, the Mad Chatter, Brian M.K., and by my side, back again by my side, the one and only Salary Captain, the March Heron, Aaron Stewart. Welcome back, buddy. Oh, thanks for having me. I am back to the land of the living. I was not feeling well at all last night. I appreciate you being able to handle things solo. And oh, yeah. yeah. Back to getting things back on track. It's been yes. too long, my friend. And don't, yes. And don't worry. I explained to all the mad caps why we were absent Thursday. So we're good to go there. We're covered there. It's been a crazy week for the both, both of us. Well, it was, but hey, we're, we're going into a new week here and uh, let's hope it's a little bit better of a week. <laughs> but before we move on, to this new week, we have to talk about the end of the NFL week, right? And man, what a fucking game. Well, at least the second half, because the first half was kind of like a little boring, a little kind of what the fuck is wrong with the Ravens? Are they broke? And, you know, and, and, and then the second half. So it, uh, it was a, a fun ass game, Aaron, Tell me, just give me your quick thoughts on it, and then I will spin mine. My number one thought on this one was, I think the score is 25 to 9. Colts were up by 16 points. I remember watching that going, two touchdown game. The Ravens still have Lamar Jackson. I have a feeling the Ravens are going to come out winning this game. Like, Jackson's one of those very few quarterbacks that, that it just doesn't matter what the situation is that as long as he's out there playing, they've got a chance to win. (laughs) And maybe the Ravens got to start doing something a little bit different to to take all that pressure off their their star quarterback there. But, man, uh, Ravens just – you got to applaud them. They're executing. It doesn't matter what injuries happen to this team. Uh, They're what, now four and one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, four and one. It's crazy. So props to them. Yeah, I was talking to my brother about the Ravens. And this was, I think, last night or earlier today, so before the game. And I I said the same thing. It's just all these injuries, they continue to win. They just find ways to win. And and I just love what they're doing. And on top of that, you know, we talked about in the offseason about how we thought this offense was going to pass more, was going to throw the ball more. And now – they might be doing that out of necessity because of their running back situation, but they're doing it nonetheless. I mean, Mark Andrews, 13 targets, 11 receptions, 147 yards, two touchdowns. Marquise Hollywood Brown. We can go and say, we can go ahead and say Hollywood, at least for right now, nine receptions, 125 yards, two touchdowns. The guy who, uh, according to some couldn't pass, is lighting it the fuck up, 442 yards, four touchdowns. He was 37 out of 43. 37 out of 43. So good. Yes. I I mean, I just, how could I I say all the time, by far one of my favorite fucking players to watch in football. And this was just a great example of it. Now, on the other side, I got to say, I feel for the Colts. Not a huge Wentz fan, but I like the Colts overall. And uh, it's tough, but I feel like they still got a chance at one and four because Tennessee isn't special (laughs) and Tennessee's got the bills next week. So, I mean, it, it, you know, I'm kind of rooting for the Colts to get on track. They played damn well in this game. They just couldn't, they just couldn't hold off the Lamar magic. They just couldn't do it. Um, But Jonathan Taylor, holy shit. And Sorry, I'll pass the baton back to you in a second because you had anything else. I feel like I hijacked it. This is what happens when I get a solo pod, Aaron C. Then I get then I get a little full of myself and I start talking. And, and, and it might be, you know, partially subconsciously, I'm preparing for my other pod, which I'll be recording as this after this one. The miscellaneous Debris Podcast. Check it out. It, warning, it's a non-sports, non-sports podcast. Just, just warning. So, but I, I, in one of my fantasy leagues is actually one of my longest running dynasty leagues. And it's an IDP league. I walked in 
down 60 some points. And I'm thinking, there's no fucking way I'm winning this thing. Uh, but I had Patrick Queen. Now, that's not the name really to do that, but I did have Patrick Queen. I think he got me four and a half points. But who I did have was both Jonathan Taylor and Lamar Jackson. So I ended up beating this guy by 20 some in the end after being down by 60 some. Just insane that dude has to be losing had to have been losing his fucking mind like he had to feel like i got this in the bag nope who sorry bro but uh so <laughs> bad loss for him but so i enjoyed my monday night all around aaron i'm sorry i will pass it back to you well and one of the things i do want to mention is kind of the fallout of this game is now with the colts a very interesting thing they have to start considering is When you talked about Carson Wentz, you have to go back to the offseason when they traded for him, in which there was a a stipulation. The the trade was a second-round pick that could become a first-round pick depending on playing time. Now, back in the offseason, we were all thinking Colts, playoff team, like they were a playoff team the year before. Really, all they seemed to be missing was a quarterback. Carson Wentz was going to be back with his old offensive coordinator, Frank Reich perfect combination there and a strong roster around Carson Wentz it at least made sense it was a gamble but Mm. it was a gamble that seemed to make sense but now look at the record one and four for the Colts you do bring up an excellent point of they're still in it because that division is just it's just garbage it's it's horrible but how many more games do do they have to lose before they start going you know what maybe we need to shut down Carson Wentz for the rest of the season so he doesn't hit that playing time, uh, that 75% playing time snap share or something like that, that makes that second rounder become a first round pick. It would be, (laughs) this is stuff you would see in the old school NBA, some shenanigans there, that's for sure. Yeah. But but, um, it would it's the smart business move. You don't want to just lose a first round pick, especially when at the Colts rate, it's going to be higher. Yeah. yeah. The Colts rate, it's going to be super high right now. So that, that is something to start watching in the next, I'd say mm. we're going to give this probably four more weeks. Like when it gets to mid season for the Colts, depending on how far out of the playoffs they are, that's when they're going to start going, okay, we need to wave the white flag on the season shut down Carson Wentz, like find a reason. And I don't think they have to make up anything. He was hurt in the preseason going Mm. into the season. He probably, you you could, the doctors could probably find something to fail, like fail a physical on him or something. Like they, they could have, they could find something. They absolutely can. So not so much about this game, but it is something worth monitoring. And poor Colts oh, for fans. sure, for sure. <laughs> poor, poor Colts fans. Oh, you got to feel for them. You do, but I think again. I mean, if it were most other divisions, you'd be cooked. But it, in this particular division, because I mean, unless Tennessee pulls out a miracle, they're going to lose to Buffalo next week. They're going to be three and three, right? Right. So, I mean. If Indy can pull out a win next week, they're two and four, you know? So I don't know. I, they just played really well the past couple of weeks. And again, I'm not even a Wentz fan, but he, he's done well in the offense. I mean, Michael Pittman has become something. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, there's a little Paris Campbell action tonight, even, <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's so it's like I, I would, and I love Jonathan Taylor, so I'd like to see them see them do well. And uh, it, it, but I, I'm with you. It, it's going to get to a point where, you know, if you're bought out of it, you got to get you got to do something about that because that means right. you're going to have a much higher pick, and you don't want to give that up. So, right. all right, man, what a fun ass game. What a fun ass game. Well, before we get into it, I'm just going to uh, get into a little uh, Thursday night preview. Before we do that, I was going to quickly just mention a few key injuries from the weekend. It does look like Juju 
is done for the season. Uh, looks like he's going to have surgery on his shoulder. And it looks like Quintez Cephas from the Lions, who is, you know, starting to do some shit lately, uh, collarbone. So he's probably done for the season. Uh, Kenny Galladay is already ruled out for this coming week, as is Russell Wilson with the finger. He's going to be out multiple weeks. They're hoping just for just a month, but this really puts a damper on the Seahawks season. And, uh, you know, what we thought might be some, some MVP hopes for this motherfucker. Right now, it looks like it is between, I'm looking at Justin Herbert, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray. Those are the guys I'm looking at. Right now, they're playing lights out. Um, back to infirmary news, as I should have said. Uh, Max Williams from Arizona and Saquon Barkley also likely to miss this weekend. And then there is a bunch of people, all sorts of banged up. Taysom Hill, Daniel Jones, concussions. Like, there's just it, people banged up all over the place. So Pay attention uh, for my infirmary news throughout the week, and I will keep you updated because, yeah, it's fucking piling up, man. It's that time of the year. It's just it's just bloody Sundays after bloody Sundays. Love it. <sighs> ah, it's a yes. wonderful time of the year where your your dreams of winning fantasy football championships are just destroyed before the bye weeks. <laughs> Gotta love it. And, and one of the one of the injuries I do want to do want to talk about was the Saquon Barkley because there was a lot of people that were like oh my god it's it's super bad like he's done like done for the season there there was a lot of overreactions because of course there was the pitcher his ankle swollen like a balloon um guess what like that tends to happen when you sprain your ankle and just watching you know if the ankle inverts like Like, that's a normal ankle sprain that is not Mm. the dreaded high ankle sprain High ankle sprain is your ankle rolls the other way. It rolls out, not the way it wants to roll. So right. people just need to relax. Like Excuse the me. swelling that happens when you sprain things that doesn't, I know it looked gigantic. That's not into the world. It's, it's something to monitor, but it's like, it may be more week to week on that one, probably out this week, but we've seen Barkley come back from a high ankle sprain in two weeks this is a this was a low ankle sprain. This was a regular ankle sprain. He's a freak. He may yeah. come back soon. It stinks. The guy just can't catch a break. But I did want to mention that. Like someone asked me if he if he broke his ankle. I was like, no. <laughs> it's yeah. just just a rolled ankle. It just looks bad. No, I think initially I read two to four weeks. But now it doesn't even seem like he's going to – because they haven't even completely ruled him out for this week. He's just doubtful. So – I'd say there's a chance he might be back next week. And like you said, Saquon's a freak. So, it, you know, yeah. keep an eye on that one. But, yeah, Certainly. a lot of a lot of injuries out there. So keep an eye on things. But we have the Thursday night game coming up. Yes, we do. And what the hell is it? Bucks at Eagles. This should be a fucking banger. I hope. I hope, I hope so, too. Uh, but, hey, the Eagles – Played well Sunday to come back on the Panthers. You kind of like what they did, but I still, I still need to see more from them. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see if they can keep up with the bucks, but uh, it is in Philly. So I don't know. We'll see, man. We'll see. (laughs) It's going to be an interesting. I really don't want like, cause we've had some really good games and the bucks really, I mean, they went out and killed it this past week, but they really haven't been like super fucking overwhelming most weeks. So right. it, you kind of hope Philly can hang in there, but we'll, we'll see. What, what do you think about the game coming up, Aaron? Uh, well, the first thing I do want to mention too, you're talking about some MVP candidates. We do still have to mention Tom Brady and they're coming off a five touchdown performance there. Like yeah, he, I'll let you do that. Keep I'll, let you, I'll let you, I'll let you mention him. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not. He is keeping pace. I do like, of course I've been spending the, the last few weeks, you know, you know who I am rooting for for MVP, and I think has a strong case, and it's Kyler Murray. Yes, but, sir. But Brady, with that performance, was a nice reminder to everyone else, like, hey, it's not just these young guys over here like that. As he defies father time, and that performance that performance last week against a Dolphin secondary, which is good at stopping receivers, and Tom Brady said, hmm, we'll see about that. 
because he connects with Antonio Brown for what seemed to be about 200 yards. I don't think he quite reached that, but it seemed like it. Now, the game between Philadelphia and Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay does have a massive, massive weakness. And that is they can't stop the pass mm. at all. Like, even Jacoby Brissett looked good at times. I mean, let that sink in. Jacoby Brissett, <laughs> who is, if he's your backup quarterback that has to play for a game or two, you're fine if he's having to have an extended stay as your starting quarterback. You don't feel so good about that. But for Philadelphia, this is a game where I start going. Devontae Smith is interesting. Dallas Goddard. Dallas Goddard's interesting because Tampa Bay is also not good at stopping tight ends. Like, it's just really any any receiver, they have trouble stopping. So if this game becomes a shootout, Philadelphia, the the question becomes, can Jalen Hurts, can he match Tom Brady for exactly right. that last game was not pretty for Jalen Hurts, and it no. wasn't until some I believe both were in the fourth quarter. Maybe the first one was like late in the third quarter, but the rushing touchdowns, the rushing touchdowns, really bailed them out in fantasy football. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it it'll be it'll be an interesting test for Jalen Hurts. I agree. I'll be a fun one to watch. Tampa Bay is a seven point favorite. On the road, Ooh, that's a difficult spread. They the Bucks should win this one, but in the NFL, any any team can win any week. So I haven't dug deep into this game yet, but I'm a little nervous for that spread. I don't know if I could do Tampa Bay seven points coming off this massive victory against the Dolphins. It mm. seems like they may be kind of set up to. You know, kind of take it easy, go on cruise control, maybe do just enough to beat Philadelphia, but not not by a touchdown. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take Tampa Bay. I did I really want to pick Philly, is what I want to do. <laughs> but uh I, I'm just uh, it I just kind of worry. I think you're probably safe playing Devonta Smith and probably Jalen Hurts. I, I guess it just worries me. It again, it feels like it feels like sometimes these coaches with these young quarterbacks, they just doesn't it feel like they just are hesitant to just let it loose a little bit? Um, yeah. I don't know. I hope they can make it an awesome competitive game. And you know what? We'll probably get it because. I mean, the primetime games have been, I was talking to the wife earlier about this, man. The game, it, this has really been kind of a crazy year if you think about it. There's been, I mean, so far in the first five weeks, there's been like OT every week. They were mentioned that. Um, there's been a bunch of comebacks. There's been crazy shit like missed extra point, missed field goals, like the Green Bay Cincinnati. Game. I mean, just, just craziness all over the place. It feels like every fucking week. And uh, it just, I, I know we probably feel like this every year, but it just feels like this year is just feels just a tad extra wild. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just me. Yeah. Maybe it's just me. It's been a pleasant surprise because yeah, especially Thursday night football games in the past, it's like, Oh my gosh. Like you try not to complain. Cause you're like, yeah, I mean, it's football. Like, yeah, football's right. on. Right. Like, we were worried with, with COVID. Like, mm-hmm. so you try, I try to catch myself from complaining, but, you know, years past, those Thursday night football games have not been pretty. <laughs> right. And we have been blessed to have some of some really good games, and especially yeah. the Monday night football games, too. I mean, just this this is a perfect example as well. This, this game oh, was man. This, It really was. This, our third, this was at least our second overtime Monday night football game. Yeah, and I'd, I'd it, say so. And I'm trying to think if we've had a third, but still, like even two out of five Monday night football games going into overtime, crazy. And both involving the, the Ravens, too. <laughs> right. Man, it was fun. Lamar is so damn fun to watch. They just, once they so got going, fun. man, it was like they couldn't be stopped. It was crazy. He's one of a handful. It's like him, Brady, Patrick Mahomes. Those are like the 
three guys. Well, and I guess now you have to put like Justin Herbert. Like those four guys, it's like, okay, there's two minutes left in the game. You're down by, uh, let's say you're down by six points. You need a touchdown. It just seems that when the ball's in their hands, they're you're going to be fine. Like, yeah. yeah. Or, or even when you're down two touchdowns, like late in the second half, and it's like, oh, my gosh. Like, you know, we've played like crap for – almost three quarters, but here we are. And I think we could still win it. Like it's rare to have quarterbacks like that. People love to crap on Lamar Jackson and they need to stop it. He, he doesn't win the same way as other quarterbacks, but still like special players, they just find a way to win. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say one more time, 37 out of 43. Yeah. That's what he threw for. That's fucking great. He missed love six it. fucking passes people. Out of 43. <laughs> like, and how many of those were just like throwaways? Like, I, I didn't watch every single pass, but makes you wonder. Right. No, man, that was a hell of a game. Hell of a game by Lamar. Thanks, Lamar, for helping me win a couple of matchups, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, and man, again, one of my favorite people to watch. He's just, he, he's fucking amazing. So I don't know how the hell we got back to the. <laughs> <laughs> Lamar Jackson. Oh, because we were talking just about time games. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking forward uh, to the Bucks Eagles. Hopefully the Eagles can keep pace. Would like to see that because, as you said, it's not a very good secondary in Tampa. So, mm-hmm. all right, buddy. Well, I guess anything else you want to cover? We did say, I guess I should mention Gruden got fired for basically saying a bunch of uncool <laughs> shit in emails. Or I guess he didn't get fired, he resigned. Uh, mm, but yeah, uh, we'll just say, you know, that's the nice way of saying, uh, yeah, hey, he got um, fired, right? <laughs> but that's just an important rule of like, I know people go, oh, they're digging up stuff from like, I don't know, a decade ago or, or however long, but still, just don't ever put that stuff. Like, you know, how sometimes they say you type out a tweet and you delete it, like, just, just do that. Like, if you're gonna yeah. have these thoughts. You know, don't don't press send. Like, geez, like the PR person. That's probably the slogan. Don't press send. Right. <laughs> well, and when it comes down to it, if he's making these kind of comments, that's probably the kind of person he is. Now, I'm someone as a recovering alcoholic who's had to un- overgo changes myself, so I'm not going to put it past anybody to say hey that person could have changed but his response to this whole whole situation has pretty much shown yeah he hasn't changed (laughs) so it it was kind of like eh, this shit was going to come to a head and i think it came to like hey you resign or we'll fire you kind of situation and you know in those situations it's a difficult pill right like it's no one wants to no one ever wants to admit when they're wrong. And because it's a very, hum- it's a very humbling thing. Uh, but man, you know, I feel like society as a whole would be a little more lenient towards someone if they just go, you know what? That was something that was really crappy that I did that there should be consequences for my actions. And some people are like, should you lose your job for that? Well, then. NFL is quite different. You know, it is, there is sponsorships. There is a whole bunch of business stuff that goes on. So it's not like you doing something like this and getting fired from whatever your local job is. It is different because Mm. business, yay. So, so when people go, does the crime, does the punishment fit the crime? In this case, yes, it's, NFL's got an image, and, and above all else, that's what they're going to do. And we've seen players, uh, I think Ray Rice, like his career ending because you know, the stupid elevator uh, video. And just like, don't, don't do stupid things, mm. <laughs> especially when you're in these top, top positions in, in sports or really anywhere. Or just even if you don't have a top job somewhere, just – be a decent human being yeah that that should be what people should be (laughs) yeah it's uh 
I, I, I can't say it. Yeah, you pretty much summed it up. Just be a decent human being. I mean, is, is the bottom line. And, and uh, one of my favorite comedians, Tom Segura, he, he has a joke where he's talking about being in a movie theater and somebody brought a baby and the baby's crying. And basically the movie theater attendant says some people suck. And it's true. Some people just suck. And, it, you know, there's going to be those in every walks of life. And, uh, you know, same as football, too. So it is what it is. You got to kind of feel for, I mean, <laughs> that whole, that like, I just feel bad for organizations that it just feels like, because, you know, I rooted for the Vikings for a very long time. And it's just, you know, another one of those organizations that it's just like, it seems like, nothing ever goes right. <laughs> like it's always something it feels like, you know, and, and so I can relate to Raiders fans and I feel for you because it, you, you know, you're probably excited getting some John Gruden and, you know, you started out the year playing really, really well. And, you know, this is a, a shit thing to get thrown in, um, in the middle of all that. So, you know, sucks for the fans. Most of all, I would say, and, and the players, you know, they're probably like, fuck Cause you know, that's just more drama and, 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 you know, shit for them. So I don't know why we're getting so deep into this. I'm sorry, Aaron, <laughs> <laughs> you know me, I like the personal side of football stuff too. And it, and, and, you know, this is just kind of one where I guess may, maybe I'm blind. I never really saw it in Gruden, but I also can't say I was surprised by any of it. So it's just well, kind of like it all came to a head and there you go. Sorry, Raiders It's a fans. good reminder. It's a good reminder. We never, we don't truly know these players, these coaches, right. these GM. We don't know them as people. So, you know, we, that's a good reminder that we need to stop deifying all these, all these people, human beings. And yeah. we're not perfect. They're not perfect. Let's stop pretending that they're perfect. And yeah, just the moral of this, uh, this podcast, be a decent human being. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it, man. One hundred fucking percent. I don't really got much else to say other than, uh, again, once again, hopefully the Eagles can keep up with the box on Thursday. <laughs> uh, such a great and make sure, make sure too. If you're listening to oh, us yeah. <laughs> on any of the podcast services, that's Spotify, Castbox. I'm pretty certain we are on any of your podcast services, any that I have looked at, we've been there. Mm -hmm. If you're watching on YouTube, give us, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, please. It, it helps. It helps us know that what we're doing is good, that you guys enjoy it. I think we've got something good here. Even if we kind of went off on a tangent on being a decent human being, <laughs> for the most part, we've got some good stuff here and your support helps us to keep doing this on a weekly, multiple times on a weekly basis. Please support us. And I, I, I second everything Aaron said. And we'll also, I won't apologize, but I'll just say, you, I, I will take the blame for any and all tangents that go off course. <laughs> I will totally, I, I know Aaron gives his input, but I know I'm, I can be a bit of an instant. I'm raising my hand. I know. So it's okay. But anyway, yes, we do appreciate anybody that does listen and stays with us because uh, we enjoy doing this and we hope, uh, you know, other people enjoy listening. We know there's a handful out there at least. So thank you. Thank you to you. Yes. So. All right, Aaron. Well, let's get the hell out of here. Absolutely. I'm going to go uh, record my other podcast, buddy. Love it. And we will let you go for now, Mad Caps. And we will be back Thursday after the game, of course. After the game. Bucks and Eagles. Come on, Eagles. Keep up in there. Take out Tom Brady. Ta-ta for now, latest madcaps!